This morning I was prepared not to ask anybody to do the scripture readings. But I would type them on and read them for you. And right as I came in, after getting vested, Roy said, Madison's willing to read today. And I said, has he seen some of the names in there? I wouldn't do it. He said, I'll give it my best. Thank you, Madison. I think you did a fantastic job for the last year. God, I ask that you send your spirit once again upon me. Remove me from myself and replace that with the movement of your Holy Spirit within. Calm my heart and my anxieties. Calm the ears and the minds of those who would hear a message today. That the message they hear not be what I have to say, but what you have for them on their faith journey. Amen. If not today, then when? From the Gospel of Mark this morning, we find these words. And Jesus said to them, Is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm? To save life or to kill? They were silent. Jesus looked around at them with anger and grieved at their hardness of heart. The Sabbath today. Should we celebrate and go out and kill somebody? That's what he's asking. It's kind of a scary little question, isn't it? I guess it depends on what you believe. For Jesus, it did not matter the day of the week or even the hour of the day. The work of the kingdom of God had to be done. Jesus focused on feeding the hungry, not on what day of the week it was. Jesus focused on healing the lame, not is this the hour of prayer. Jesus focused on forgiving those who wished him harm, not saying that dirty, rotten scoundrel. Jesus worked for justice, not saying, it didn't happen to me, so I need not to worry. Jesus focused on and lived a life of compassion, not asking, what do I get out of this life? And that is exactly what we are called to do today. If we see an injustice in the world around us, then we must speak up and do something. We must take action. We cannot let the day or time dictate our compassion for others and for all of creation. We need to be focused on the same things that Jesus was focused on. What Jesus was doing on that Sabbath was putting his own life in peril as he worked to heal the man with the withered hand. During this month of June, as we celebrate pride, let us keep these principles at the forefront of our minds and our hearts. We know of and we have seen so much evil and injustice in the world at large, in our country, in our own state, and even within our own LGBTQ communities. Looking at what's going on in our society today, we see children totally separated from their parents at the border because we want to be evil. We choose to be evil on the Sabbath. We see children just totally misplaced and forgotten but that's okay, there was somebody. That's wrong. And Jesus would never have allowed that to happen. And neither must we. We see in Arkansas the cutting of access to medical care for women. Just because they think that's the right thing to do. When Jesus cured the woman of the massive bleeding, he didn't say, what do you believe, what do you think? Jesus said, your faith has healed you. 
And that's what we need to be telling people today in our world. Look at Pulse nightclub. 49 young, beautiful lives taken on Latin night in Orlando, Florida. Killed for no reason other than somebody felt it was the right thing to do, for their God had told them to go do evil. Our God does not work with an evil heart. Our God does not condemn a people who love. Our God does not condemn people who want something better and brighter for their lives. If we are not willing to fight and to speak out for those things, then we have no right, carefully listen, we have no right to expect anyone else to come to our defense. If you want to be defended, stand up, be proud, be tall, and defend yourself in the name of Jesus Christ. Do not sit back and say, oh, that good-looking cop will come save me. That good-looking cop may come over and beat your ass if you're the wrong color. Stand up for justice. Each and every day, ask yourself the same question that Jesus asked those gathered with him that day. Is it lawful on the Sabbath to, good, to do good or to harm? To save life or to kill? We all know the answer to that question. During this time of celebration of pride, let us truly take pride in the way we live our everyday lives. Let us celebrate the fact that a granddaughter and her wife and three children may come and celebrate pride with us. Let us celebrate the fact that the middle-aged little boy who may be about 10 wants to wear a damn tutu in the parade. Celebrate it. Don't be afraid of it. When you're afraid of it and you ignore it, you are doing evil. We listened last night at a concert, a story about Tears for Bobby. A young man in 1975 who came out to his family that he was gay. And his fundamentalist, God-fearing, God-loving family took him aside and said, we're gonna pray the gay away. And any time he showed any signs of being gay, they prayed and prayed and read, read scripture to him and convinced him he was going to burn in hell. Finally, he could take it no longer with his family, so he moved away. During his young youth, he did great things that he thought were right. He made great, beautiful dolls for his sister. He went through his mother's sewing kit and took the leftover lace and made her cancel. Things that he thought were beautiful. That's doing right, not doing harm. At the age of 20, he went to see his parents. And again, they were ready to convince him that he needed to be prayed to have the gay removed. So that night, he walked out on a bridge, fell off that bridge backwards intentionally, and his body slammed into a semi going underneath the bridge and killed him. You would think how devastating that is. A young, beautiful boy of Bobby at the age of 20 had to give up his life. But what that did to the world was to change things. His mother, Marcia, then began to understand that what she had prayed for was wrong and was evil and could not be tolerated. And it happened on a Sabbath. For every day is the Sabbath. She got in touch with the Metropolitan Community Church and went and got counseling from them and prayers. 
She went and got in touch with PFLAG and started working with them and speaking and going around the world and telling the truth. You can't pray it away. You've got to do the right thing. Just as the Sabbath was not created for the sovereign, for the sovereign is the sovereign each day. The Sabbath was created for human beings. There are books of rules and regulations that have been written over the centuries as to how to honor and behave on the Sabbath, to make sure it is a day of reverence and holiness. There are books about what kind of work you can and cannot do, the distance you can and cannot travel on a Sabbath. I committed a sin this morning by walking from the Jeep inside this church because that was too far of a distance to walk on the Sabbath. So all you heathens are just sending me to hell. That's not what the Sabbath is about. There were rules as to what kind of weight you could lift. And if you really look at them, if anybody poured from a gallon of milk this morning, you broke the rules. You're condemned. Isn't that true? That's not the God I know. That's not the God that we serve. Let me tell you a secret. The Sabbath is every single day that we have the opportunity and the chance to introduce other people to our God. The Sabbath is each day that we choose to act with justice and compassion. Keep yourself holy on the Sabbath for me means to live a whole, holy and whole life each and every day. Goodness cannot take a, a day off. Justice and compassion cannot take a day off. Love and respect cannot take a day off. Do you believe those statements? If you do, let me inform you. You are goodness. You are justice. You are compassion. You are love. And you are respect. And for that, you deserve all those same things. Not just on certain days, or when certain people decide that you are at a particular moment in their journey, but you deserve those things all the time. Let us on this day restore all of these things to the world around us. From the reading of 2 Corinthians, we read the following. For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as sovereign, with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For it's the God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. If we are the servant, then we must forever and always be prepared to serve even the least of those among us. For many people have said for years, we are the least. They're wrong. We are the best. We are God's creation. God's joy, God's excitement. So let us not think that we are among the, among the least, but accept the gift that we are the best. If not today, then when? Amen.